Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Exodus 32 <clears throat> And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount. Now let's go to 24, 18. Exodus 24, 18. That's my writing. I don't think that, that may be 20. Yeah, 24, 18. He delayed to come down. The Bible tells us, scripture is scripture. And Moses went into the midst of the cloud and got him up into the mount. And Moses was in the mount 40 days and 40 nights. We get the tap, we get the pattern. From there, you know, everything that we've been reading about the garments, about the tabernacle, sizes, materials, run to 32. It's been 40 days and 40 nights. And gathered themselves, that is assembly and unity, unto Aaron, and said unto him, Up, let's been sitting down, make us G-O-D-S. That's what they wanted. Not where is he, go find out where he is. Make us gods. <coughs> <coughs> they just coming out of Egypt where there were gods. 430 years of gods. Make us gods. Which shall go before us. As leadership. For as this Moses. The man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt. No, 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 no. God did. God brought them up. We want, we don't know, we have no idea, want not what is become of him. Now here's the, the demand of them. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings. They were slaves in Egypt and yet they're wearing earrings. Golden earrings. Break them off. Funny how it says break them. Which are in the ears of your wives. Of your sons. The males are wearing earrings. Nothing new under the sun. And your daughters. And bring them unto me. That's the reply to the demand. Nothing like when just wait. He's okay. Things are going well up there. Give it time. All right. We don't know Moses make us God. All right. Give me your golden earrings. I was like Aaron already knew what he was going to do. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in their ears and brought them onto Aaron. Here's the offering. They're bringing to their gods golden earrings. And he, Aaron, received them at the hand, they handed it over, and fashioned it with a graving tool. He is doing, he is making. As in fashion means he has a particular idea in his head. So he is doing now. 
with a graving tool after he had made a molten calf. Molten is, he took the gold and he melted it down. Made a plunk of, of gold and started chiseling. And they said, the Israelites, these, I don't know why it says these. If it's one golden calf, it should say this. And it says a molten calf. And they said these. Plural. Be thy gods. With a S. Plural. Now the only way that you can assume why it is gods and these. Would be they are worshipping not only the cow. Or calf. But also the gold. That made that cow. O Israel which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Alright. Exodus 20 verse 1. Exodus 20 verse 1. And God spank all these things. These words saying, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt. They said Moses. And then they turned around and said, the gods brought us out of Egypt. Verse 4, thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. What did they do? And any likeness of the thing that's in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath. Verse 5. Thou shalt not bow thyself down to them, nor serve them. They broke it. Back to Exodus 32, 4. O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. The gods that were defeated by God in Egypt, they are worshiping again. And we saw that this calf God. And when Aaron saw it, he fashioned it. He built an altar before it. Getting religious. And Aaron made a proclamation. He's making rules, he's making announcements. This is the first time that this word shows up in the Bible. And said, here's the proclamation. Tomorrow is a feast to the Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. It's the right God, but the wrong way. Now, we already learned from Moses up on the mount that there are feast days. But now we got holidays for gods. Moses is up on the mount with the right ways. Aaron's down at the bottom of the mount with the wrong ways. And they rose up early on the morning to go to church. Got up early and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. That's the first time that play shows up in the Bible. And look at the contents. From Genesis 1 to now, you have not seen the word play. And yet you go to church, you do your offerings to God, and then you have a fellowship dinner to follow, and you let everybody play. I've been in church like that. And sometimes we don't even have the, they did not have the evening service because of the fellowship that would have followed. And all the people that would come 
even after the church service, come to the fellowship that was not at the offering, the service would be there. I always thought that was amazing. But there it is. That goes on in churches all around the world today. Eating and drinking and playing. I-47. <laughs> Again, well, we're not playing bingo. We're playing Jesus all. <laughs> J-50, you know. I forget how to do all that stuff. So there it is. Let's see what the reaction is. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go get thee down. It's been 40 days and 40 nights. You know what ended the 40 days and 40 nights? The worship service of the, of the people of God. Moses, they're talking. All right, let's we're looking at 31, 17. It shall it is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and refreshed it. Moses, there's the talents. Get down there now. And we're going to read right now what's what's being said while Moses is up in the mountain. Get thee down. Now, can you just imagine what Moses is, what's going on, Lord? For thy people. Now, God allowed this to happen when he's, he's with Moses. At any time, he could have let him thunder and blew these people up. Well, how come God didn't kill them? You know, that's the thing today in church. How come God didn't get, you know, let, let, let fire come down from God? God allowed this to happen, verses 1 to 6. The free will of man. While the preacher's away. Those are the preacher's away and the associate preacher's in charge of the system. I call it a system. And God tells Moses, thy people. He has rejected the people. All the time, Lord, we want water. We want food. Oh, the, the Egyptians are coming again. Oh, God, did you bring us out in the wilderness to kill us? And God's like, calm down. Here's some manna. Here's some quail. Here's some nice, fresh, tasty water. Here's some food. As soon as the idolatry picks in, God says, Moses, they're your people. That's how serious idolatry is. They got a golden calf. And... God tells, I don't know if we're going to finish this one tonight. God told Mo, they're thy people. The one that brought them out says, thy people. Now, what do you think goes on when God looks at religion where they've got idolatry going on? You think they, people can claim, oh God, you know, help us, God bless America. And God's like, they're your people, not mine. Thy people, which thou brought us out in the land of Egypt. God is, I'm done with them. I've had it. Have corrupted themselves. What is corruption? Idolatry. Anybody who's involved in worshiping idols or images are in corruption according to the Bible. Now, if you can show a Catholic the, 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 re, the reference there and there, that golden calf they're worshiping, God saying corrupted, you got something. That's why the churches don't want their people in the Bible or give them a modern Bible. I wonder if this has been changed. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them 40 days ago. Now that's not too long. A month and 10 days. Jewish calendar. 40 days ago I told them. And I had you come up here so I can put it in writing. I haven't just put it in writing. You're holding it. And look what they've done already. Which I commanded them. They, the, the nation, have turned them, 
That's right. They had made them a molten calf. See how the old nation made it? It was their earrings. It's what they wanted. Not just Aaron. All right. They worshiped him. That's what the, the commandments say. Thou shalt not worship it. Don't make it. Don't worship it. And have sacrifice there on too. They brought offerings. Whatever the offerings they, I don't know what they, if it was animals or whatever. And said, these be thy gods. Now notice God knew what, knew what they said. Verse 4. God's in the mountaintop having a conversation with Moses and he knows what somebody else has said. God is in his glory and he knows what somebody said in the United States of America while on the other side of the world in Asia he knows what they said where they're on the other side of the world in Africa he knows what they said when you're on the other side of the Antarctica of the world God knows what you said. The eyes of the Lord in every place beholding the evil and the good. While he's feeding in the whales. While he's tending the funeral of a sparrow. While he's listening to a sinner repent and get right by Jesus Christ in the gospel. While another man has walked off in eternity into hell. While somebody is disregarding the message. While there's somebody on their knees praying for corn and water to get corn out of their fields and make a living. While someone's praying in the hospital bed because a sick one that's in that bed. While somebody's praying, Lord God, give me this. Oh, Lord God, thank you for this. All this going on, God knows what is being said. And it's even recorded in the book what they said. These be thy gods, Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Now that's not a smack in God's face. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. And behold, and this is what they are, a stiff-necked people. That's what the Jewish people are. And that is said not by a Gentile. That's not even said by a Jewish man, Moses. That is said by God, Jehovah. And those people down there, they're mine. Man, they're stiff-necked. They won't listen. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against let me alone so I get to get madder and madder and madder and then it says that I may consume them I will make of thee a great nation now, let me ask you a question since the study of Genesis 1 when has God been so mad that he wants to wipe people off the earth just before Noah's flood and he did saved eight souls There was a complete city called Sodom he wiped off the map. But when has he been like this for one nation called Israel, which is people? Not once. And yet, when the time, as far as a nation of Israel, from the calling of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the twelve tribes, and the 430 years being in Egypt, when has God been so angry? He hasn't. When does he do get angry with them and says, listen, I'm going to wipe them off? When they got involved in idolatry. And why I impress this point. You cannot say idolatry and God. And say it in the two words. And be holy and righteous. You cannot. And yet it is being done. That whatever is worship in the religion. God approves. No he don't. It is a serious matter. That Satan can use something that has eyes and ears and nose and, and have no life. And that gets the credit over God. And Satan is going to step it up in the tribulation period. He's going to take something that has, no, that has ears and nose and eyes and all that has no life. And he's going to give it life. And at that point you will have to receive that mark. Of that image. 
that Paul, I forget which one it is, he's going to this city and we worship the great image that came down from Jupiter. God knew what he was doing when he said no idolatry. And America has her little Oscars and Tonys and uh, Washington Monument and Mount Rushmore with faces and eyes with no light. And Moses besought the Lord his God. God Moses' God is God. And said, Lord, it's Jehovah. Why does thy why does thy wrath wax hot against thy people? Wait a minute. God said over here. He said, Oh. And Lord said to Moses, Get thee down for thy people. You know what Moses says? Thy people, God. Moses walks right up to God and says, Oh, no, no, you're wrong. <laughs> They're your people. I wonder if I get God so angry at times, you know, Jesus, son, that, 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 but he's ours by the blood. Yeah, I know. Uh, you know, we're just like Israel. We sin. Thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt. Ooh, Moses. You're standing on some ground here talking to God like that. And not only that, with great power and with a mighty hand. He's quoting God. This is what God's been saying. All the study we've been doing. That Israel may know that they, they, I, I am the God that brought them out of the land. Now, what is Moses doing now? He has stepped into the office of Jesus Christ. Let's go to 1 John 2.1. 1 John 2.1. We're going to see Moses in office here. 1 John 2.1. My little children, that's what they are, that's what the nation of Israel is to God. These things write out, I write unto you, that ye sin not. Don't sin. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Now you got to stop there because... Moses did not pay for the sins of Israel, verse 2. But Moses is stepping into the Father saying, they're your people. This is what you said. Not only does Jesus say that, but look what Jesus does. And he is the appropriation for our sins, verse 2. And not only, not, yeah. And not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Jesus steps into the Father and says, Hey, hey, they're ours. They are a child of us, Father, by my salvation, by the blood of Jesus Christ, me, Father. And that's it. Hey, their sins are under the blood, Father. So when we also look at 1 Timothy 2 5, we see the office continue of Jesus Christ, 1 Timothy 2 5. This is one of the first verses I've ever really, when I first read across this verse, which I've forgotten, this is one of them verses that I know the verse. It will take me a little time to find it, but I, I was able to turn to this verse because I came out of Catholicism. And it says, 1 Timothy 2 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus wasn't married. The religion I came out of. That's why I memorized that verse. I would be dealing with my family. 
But Moses is stepping up between God. He is bringing that advocate. He's bringing that. He's being that mediator as Jesus is for today. Say, God, I know you're upset with them. But they are your people. And God, it wasn't me that brought them out of Egypt. It was you quoting what God said. Now, I'm telling you something. Look at Exodus 29, 46. 29, 46. And this is God speaking. And they shall know that I am the Lord their God that brought them forth out of the land of Egypt that I may dwell among them. I am the Lord their God. And Moses says, Thou has brought them. He's quoting God himself. And I'm saying is Moses Love these people. In order to be doing this before the Holy Father, before the Holy God, before God Almighty of all and all. He's, 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 he's actually calling God wrong. Moses is telling God, it's not me. <laughs> What did I do? Remember, remember at the sea? I, I, you parted it. I didn't do nothing. Just raised my hand. Remember, guy, when we first had this discussion, I'm not elegant. I'm not able to do this. Don't look at me, God. It is you. And Moses is testifying, God, it is you. And wherefore should the Egyptians speak, the enemy, and say, For mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains, and to consume them from, off, from the face of the earth. Turn thy fierce wrath, fierce wrath, that's Moses speaking, fierce wrath. And repent. Imagine a man walking up to God saying, God, yes, repent. Of this evil against thy people. God, if, if, if you get so hot and, and destroy them, your enemy is going to say, well, what kind of God is that? He's wicked. He's mean. He couldn't bring them into the promised land. You see how God is now obligated by his word. I'm going to bring you to a, man that, uh, to a land that flows with milk and honey. I want to kill them all. I'm sick of them. God, remember what you said? You made a promise. And later on, he's not going to let them in the land. He's going to let their children in. But do you see how idolatry, Moses, the a man, in front of God says, you are fiercely in wrath. Repent. Remember Abraham, the foundation of the Jewish people, Isaac, that promised child, and Israel, Jacob, remember him, thy servants. To whom thou swearest by thy own self, and said unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. I don't think they're there yet as much as the stars. It's only been 330 years in Egypt. <laughs> and all this land that I have spoken, I will give it unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. Lord, you told Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob that land is theirs, and if you wipe them off the map right now, you lied. Whoa, Moses. And the Bible records that our God is not a liar. 
He is not able, cannot, and will not lie. So there's only one thing that God can do right now. He's got to calm down. And when you look at Jesus, the advocate, when you look at Jesus, the mediator, and you realize that God could get this mad at a born-again, saved Christian for the things that we do, and Jesus is like, he's ours. Father, he, he, he's under the blood. Remember, Father, never forsake him, never leave him. No man cast him out of my hand. Thank God we got Jesus praying for us and the Holy Spirit uttering prayers that we can't even utter. And the Lord repented of the evil. What would have been the evil? What's the evil here? He would have wiped them all out. They would have all been dead. That would have been evil. <laughs> been evil if you were a Jewish person there in the wilderness you had to, whatever God done to you you would have been in hell at that moment forever right now still being hell today now this happened somewhere else too look at Jonah chapter 3 verse 10 you think of a fish story Jonah 3 10 Now what happened here is Israel has sinned, grossly sinned. Nineveh is at the point in God's thing that I have had it with them. I am going to completely destroy those Jews. I am going to completely destroy those Ninevites. I'm done. Now Moses heard God's wrath. And Moses steps in and says, um, God, you got to calm down. you got to repent. You promised. You made a word of a promise to somebody. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Now, when we run to Jonah, here is Nineveh, a wicked Gentile city. And we're not going to go through the whole story. Most people do know it. God sends Jonah, and we know the whole story about Jonah in the you know, but he sends Jonah to say, listen, I want you to go to Nineveh. I want you to warn that city. I want you to tell them. I forget how many days, but I'm going to destroy this city. In Jonah 3, 4, just to get the message. And Jonah began to enter the city a day's journey. And he cried and said, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now there's no love, there's no peace, and there's no charity of Noah against the Ninevites. None at all. I mean, he sits down in chapter 4. He's waiting for them to be destroyed. But something remarkable happens in verse 10 of chapter 3. And God saw their works, that they turned from their evil way, and God repented of the evil that he had said he would do unto them, and he did it not. Well, boom, that thing that's happened over here in Exodus 32 has happened to Gentiles in chapter uh, 3 of Jonah. And it's happening today for those that are under the blood of Jesus Christ. And John says, the, John the Baptist in John chapter 3, the last verse, He that has the Son has everlasting life. He that has not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God. That's hell. And the moment that that person that has rejected Christ comes to the point at Calvary, gets on his knees or stand, whatever, he says, Jesus, you're my Savior. All my sins I somehow I place upon you. I put my faith and trust with my heart. That you're able to save me by your blood. And that moment the wrath of God's like. It's gone. It's under the blood. For a child of God. That is under the blood. Or a man that has just gotten saved. That wrath of God. God repents and says. I'm not going to do it. Jonah's case was. 
I'm going to wipe them. It's a warning. I'm going to wipe them off the map. I'm just going to. Before God does any judgment or wrath, He warns them. And you got to realize when God says, go in all the world and preach the gospel, we may be preaching to somebody that God is already going to cast that wrath upon them, the Ninevites. And they were to get right. Look what Jonah did to the Ninevites. They survived for many years after that. So here's, here's the Lord in chapter 32 of Exodus. The Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto the people. Genesis 6.6. 6. It's everywhere. You know, people, God is so mean. No, he's not. Watch this one. Genesis 6.6, 6, number of man. Repent is a change. I'm no longer going to serve the devil in the flesh. I'm going to serve God. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth. And it grieved him, the Lord, at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy men I have created. And then we know one man in his family is spared. And we can go into about Sodom and Gomorrah. God is love, but what are we talking about our God here? We're talking about people who have sinned against God. The wrath of God. And we got to stop being a, uh, stop being a rebel like Jonah and get out there and tell them. The wrath of God is coming if you do not get right. No one told Moses to do it. Moses just stepped in and said, hey, Ooh. You know why Moses did that? Because he loved them people. After all what they'd done to him. And Moses turned and went down from the mount. And the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. We, we left that off last night. Uh, in verse 18. And he gave Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai. Here, come, here we are right now. Verse 18 fits where we are in 32. Two tables of testimony, tables of stone written with the finger of God. Here we are. Tables written on both sides. So when you're drawing of Moses and they got the two tables there, they're written on both sides, it says. On the one side and on the other were they written by God. The tables were the work of God. And the writing was the writing of God. And the previous chapter said with God's finger. Graven upon the tables. Oh, we got two. See the two gravings now? You see the Holy Spirit? Aaron graves a calf and God engraves the word. And when Joshua heard that, okay, so now remember, remember, when we go back, they go up with the elders, they have a little meal. Moses says to Aaron, get down, get the people, they're going to have problems, they're going to have troubles, deal with it. And the elders go down. Joshua does not go down. He's halfway on the mountain. Joshua. So now you got Moses. And on the way down, he picks Jehovah saves. Because they're going to need it. And on the mount again, this is where we believe. Moses and Jehovah saves are on the mount again. When Peter, James, and John are asleep and waking to find Moses, Eliza, and Jesus. That's not the first time for Moses and Jesus. Here they are. Here they've been on this mount already. It's been God the Father, God the Son, and Moses. Now Jesus can't go down with them. The angel of the Lord can't go down with them. The children have sinned. 
So Moses grabs Joshua, which means Jehovah say, come on, Joshua, let's go. Now, is that not a beautiful situation? And when Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted, this is how loud they are. And he said to Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. Moses, they're fighting. Hear it? <coughs> this is what the plane sounds like to, to Joshua. Joshua recognizes as a sound of warfare. He's a soldier. And he said, hmm, it's not the voice of them that shout for mastery, winning. Neither the voice of them that cry to be overcome, losing. But the noise of them they sing do I hear. I hear singing, Joshua. I don't hear a war. I hear singing. I always think of Kumbaya. <laughs> As they're getting down off that mountain. Kumbaya, oh Lord. Kumbaya. I don't know. I got a sick mind. And it came to pass as soon as he came nigh unto the camp. He's not even in the camp. And they can hear him singing. That he saw the calf. That calf must have been up on a pedestal. Because if he's coming to the camp, there will be heads and tents and animals. That calf had to have been lifted up. To see the cow. Or he, he would have to walk all the way through, which he hasn't. The Bible says he hasn't walked. He is nigh to the camp. And the dancing. Oh! Eating, drinking, singing, dancing, and playing. Now, when it says over here, let's get it right. And the people sat down to eat and to drink, rose up to play, and Moses says, dancing, I wonder if that play and dancing are the same thing. I wonder if scripture was scripture, that play was dancing. So let's go play. Let the children play. Let them go dance. This is an immortal dance. It is before a golden calf. The gods dance. So what do you see when you get these idolatry, religion, you always got these glamour girls, these belly dancers, these women, you know, hip-hopping their hips and all that, dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot. Uh-oh, now Moses lost it. He has got the same hot anger as God had. They ever said Moses and God ever got angry together? Israel was done. Moses' anger waxed hot. And he cast the, cap, the tablets out of his hand. He broke all ten of the commandments right then and there. The originals are broken. They're in his hands. He threw them down. He broke them. Because Israel broke them. If you want to find anything, why don't you try to go find these original stones? Well, it doesn't say they ever picked them up or anything. They might have. I don't know. He cast the tables out. He threw them. And when you read about Jesus in the treasury, he's watching them cast their money into the temple. And the widow came here and cast in her two mics. It's like, here you go, throw them. And break them both, and break them beneath the mountain. So go find that. You want to go find something, go find that. And he took the calf, the golden calf, which they made, they made and burnt it in the fire. They have a campfire. 
some kind of fire there. They're offering sacrifices. And ground it to powder. Whoa, Moses. And strawed it upon the water. I wonder if that's the water that Jesus. I don't know. I, don't, I have no idea. And made the children of Israel drink of it. Your God, your belly? Drink your God, boys. Go ahead, have your milk. Got milk? Drink that water. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee? Now he's not blaming Aaron. He's blaming the people. Aaron, what did they do to you? That thou, Aaron, has brought so great a sin upon them. Idolatry. There, can't you see idolatry is wrong in the eyes of God? And Aaron said, Let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Aaron knows how angry he is. Moses told us how angry God is. Aaron is telling us how angry Moses is. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. Very true. God says stiff neck. It's almost like Aaron's quoting God and Moses from the mount. For they said unto me, Make us gods. Completely true. Which shall go before us. True. As for this Moses, the man that brought us out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. 100% true, Aaron. Good boy. You're telling the truth. And I said unto him, Whosoever has any gold, let them break it off. He left out the earrings. Why do you leave out the earring for some reason? I don't know. So they gave it me. Then I cast it into fire. Good job, Aaron. All right. There came out this calf. Aaron, you've been doing so good. You, you, I threw in the golden boom. Here it is. How much truth did Satan tell Eve in Genesis 3? And how much no truth did he tell Eve? Most of what the serpent said was the truth. Just a little bit was a lie. Most of what Aaron said was the truth. Just a little lie. The Bible records by the Holy Spirit. He fashioned it. It didn't come out. And when Moses saw that the people were naked. For Aaron had made them naked under their shame among their enemies. Nakedness here is that they have sinned. They stand defiled before God. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you very much. And then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Who is on the Lord's side? I wonder how many people know about the story where that verse is coming from. It's a wonderful hymn, but do they know where it's coming from? Let's get the story of who's on the Lord's side, shall we? Let him come unto me, Moses. And the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Here comes Levi, which is his family. Moses is drawing a line in, in the sand here. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. And he said unto them, Moses, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side, and go in and out from gate to gate, throughout the camp. Slay every man his brother, every man his companion, every man his neighbor. Do you remember when this last happened for Levi? In Simeon, when Dinah, the daughter, was raped, they said, Oh, yeah, well, you can be part of our faith, but you guys must be circumcised. 
How many generations are we away from Levi and Simeon? And here comes Levi, just as fierce as they were of their father. And slew a whole city. Levi the priest are not somebody to mess with. So, and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell of the people that day about 3,000 people. 3,000 people. Let's go to Acts 2.41. Something very interesting here. Acts 2.41. We're at Pentecost, a Jewish holiday. Peter has preached. Peter is the apostle to the Jewish people. Scripture with scripture. They've got the golden idol of the temple in Jerusalem and Jesus. I mean, they go up to Jesus. So, don't you see the lovely stones this place has? And he's like, yeah, you wait to see what happens in 70 AD. <laughs> but in Acts 2, 41, then they that were gladly received the word, they didn't receive the word with Moses in Israel, were baptized. And the same day they were added on ten about 3,000 souls. Here's 3,000 souls being added. Back here is 3,000 souls have been killed because of idolatry. They came out of idolatry in Acts chapter 2 through the true Jesus Christ, the Messiah, and there were 3,000 souls added. And back to 30, Exodus 32. For Moses has said, Consecrate yourselves today, today, now, to the Lord, even every man upon his son, Upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing. We gotta get rid of these people that are just wicked. What about these three thousand people? I bet you they fought Moses. I bet you they were still partying and dancing for that cow. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses said unto the people of the people for the people, ready. You didn't get it in verse 21. Let's try it again. Ye have sinned a great sin. The calf, the eating, the drinking, the dancing, the singing, great sin. And now I will go up unto the Lord pre-adventure. Moses has no idea what to do right now. I'm going to go back up. The only thing I can do right now is go back up that mountain. And if God fries me, I don't know. Pre-adventure, I shall make an atonement for your sins. There's Jesus Christ again. Going up a mountain with our sins. Now Moses won't. Jesus will. And Moses returned unto the Lord and said, Now this is how I believe going to be the words of Moses. Oh, this people have sinned. You didn't get a great sin. You didn't get it the first two times. But have sinned a great sin. And have made them gods of gold. Now God already knew that. But you got to repent of your sin that you're doing. Name it. Yet now, if thou will forgive their sin, and if not, block me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. Did you just see what Moses has did? Lord God, is there anything I can do for you? See that pause? What can I do, Lord? There's a pause. Well, then take me out of your book. Now, that's a pastor of a church. God, I love them people so much. Damn me. Damn me. If that will help them. 
Now, you know, if you do not know that Moses had a lump in his throat after saying that. And if not, the father looked to the son and the son looked to the father and said, Oh, man, 1,500 more years. That's going to come true. If Moses did not speak the actions of Jesus Christ, Father, lay it all upon me. Isaiah 53 has not been written yet, but blot my name out that they may be saved. You got to read that in a kind of context of how Moses is saying it. This is the last straw. No word that take my, damn my soul for them, please. And Jesus went into hell and deposited our sins. And came walking across that gulf. And watch this. And the Lord spake, and now the Lord speaks. After that, what Moses just said, Whosoever has sinned against me, him will I blot out of my book. Now let's look at Philippians 4.3. We've been scripture with scripture. Philippians 4.3. And this is a question that people rise. Is your name taken out of the book? Is it in the book? Is it erased from the book? And Philippians 4.3. Paul. I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which had labored for being the gospel, with Clement also, with other fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. You see, at Revelation 20, the great white throne judgment, when that book of life is there and it shows a name, the person standing there, you get eternal life. You don't jump in the lake of fire. Now, they weren't saved as a, during the church age, before or after the church age. But here in Exodus 32, God says, I have a book. Now, watch this. Whosoever sinned against me will I blot out of my book. Your name is in that book and if it gets erased, you're gone. So if you die without Christ, then your name is erased. You see how much opportunity you got to be saved? Your name is not erased till you're damned. Therefore now, go lead the people into the place of which I have spoken unto. That's what, that's what Moses said in verse 12 and 13. That land, you, took, you promised them that land. God says, okay, bring them there. Behold, my angel, capital A, capital A angel, shall go before thee. Nevertheless, in a day which I visit, I will visit their sin upon them. You don't want that to happen. You will lose. You will lose good. This is judgment. And not only was there 3,000 men killed, and the Lord plagued the people because they made the calf, which Aaron made. Now, this last final thought here. The people didn't make nothing. Aaron did. But they asked for it. Up, oh, make us gods. There are religions out there that are survived. Well, why does God allow this religion to happen? Because that's what the people want. And not only is that church leader, that denomination or cult, whatever it is, not only is that guy who's in charge of that going to be charged by God, but all the people that sat under that who wanted that. When they sit in a perverted church, whatever religion they are in, or even if it's a Baptist church, Lord forbid, and it's followed up, that's what they want. Because they can leave the doors and not come back and go start or find another church. 
You can't completely say, Satan made me join that religion. Yeah, but you could have done something about it. How many people in Daytona Beach from the street ministries that we have have heard the truth, have heard the way, have heard about Jesus Christ and still go off into whatever religion they join on Saturday or Sunday morning after hearing? You know Israel heard, thou shall not make any graven image, idol, picture, thou shall not worship them. And they done it. Thou must be born again. Thou must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ with our heart to be saved. And they go right off and do whatever they want to do. And God will lay their sins upon them. 